Hello everyone, my name is Sam Ambra. I own Simply Elegant Catering and welcome to Merrimack Valley Gourmet. We're here tonight at the Merrimack Valley Golf Club and I'd like to introduce Chef Chuck McGonigal. What's on tonight's menu, Chuck? Well, right now we're gonna make for you a really fun dish, great with the kids, it's called Chocolate Salted Yorkies. Who doesn't love chocolate and salt? I love them both. <laughs> so again, very simple, make this with the children. Yep. This is a double boiler, which is just a pan of water on the bottom. You want a medium flame, place your bowl over it. This is about a pound of dark chocolate chips. You can use milk chocolate, whatever you'd like. Okay. There's about a cup of heavy cream in here. You can also use light cream or half and half. You just want to, it takes about five minutes to ten minutes to melt the chocolate, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how much you're making, really. Right. So it's very simple. And uh, this can also be done in the microwave if you have the little kids around, you don't want the open flame. Right. That's absolutely fine. Just heat it a little, stir it. Just don't burn it. Right, right, exactly. And, and I think it's a good safety factor that we take it off the stove when we start putting the ingredients in it. Oh, absolutely. Because a lot of people aren't comfortable with working at a stove, right. or putting ingredients into a product. You take it down, you put it on the counter, and then you start to work with it. You get it all straight up. Absolutely. Why don't you show us what you're going to sure, put Sure, sure. Again, this is super simple. So now we have our cream and our chocolate, and we just want to give this a stir to combine it well. It only takes a minute. This is, yeah, this is where the kids can get in here. It's not too hot, just, just enough to melt it. So again, you only had it on the stove for about 10 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, barely 10 minutes, absolutely. And it, it can sit and melt, and it can sit there for a while. Um, if you go off and do other things, just make sure you turn down your flame. Now, the more cream you add to this, the softer the chocolate will become. Okay. So if you want a softer product, add a little bit more cream. And how much cream was that that you added? That was about that? a cup to about a pound okay. of, of, the, of the dark chocolate. Oh, I love dark chocolate. Oh. Can you spread that on me afterwards? That would be delicious. You want to lick the spoons? Oh, out? and I get the spoons, guys. The staff always wants the spoons, but I'm getting the spoons. <laughs> now to this, we're going to get a little funky. We got some chopped bacon bits. Chocolate and bacon, it's delicious. So we're gonna put that in there. That, that's about a half a pound of bacon. Cook it down crispy, Take, remove all the fat. Now, didn't you enter this recipe into a, uh, I into did. a contest a couple I did. weeks ago? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, it was in York, Maine. It was a salty, sweet competition that had to be paired with a beer. And this took first place, so I'm very happy with that. And it actually goes great with a dark beer such as Guinness. Mm -hmm. I actually had it paired with a monkey fist beer, they call it. And Is it, that it from was a, a brewery up in It's up a in local Maine? brewery. I, I really can't honestly tell you which one. I just know it's really good. Okay. And it's a funny name. <laughs> I love the name. And now we're going to take some pretzels, just crushed up pretzels. We'll add some pretzels into this and some potato chips. I prefer the ruffle because they just stay crunchier. We'll mix some of these in. Again, now this is a dish where you can put anything you want in here. You don't have to add the bacon. You can put peanuts, raisins, sky's the limit. Do a little orange zest, slip a little Irish whiskey in it if you'd like, make it an adult version. It's all great. But this is something that the kids can help you with. Oh, absolutely. Oh, this is great. Oh my God. You can come up with the two. You can make them into little balls and roll them around in orange jimmies for Halloween, if you'd like. That's all so good. That's a nice look. And it's cost effective, too. Oh, super yeah, cheap. Yeah. Super cheap. It really is. So. Now, you're going to want to take a pan, roughly nine by nine. Depends, again, how much you're making. I like to put a little bit of cooking spray in the pan. Now we're going to line it with plastic. And what the cooking spray does it just helps hold the plastic down so it's not flying up on you everywhere. It's just kind of like a glue. So here we have this. And we just turn this out into the pan. Pieces of crumbled brownie in this are really good too. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're killing me. So smooth that around. It looks like it's nice and thick and solid. It is, and again, if you want it softer, just add a little bit more cream to it. This, this is a little thicker. It'll be almost like a fudge consistency once it's done. If you add a little more cream, does that affect the setup time? Um, not really, no. no. And what I mean by setup time is just how long it's gonna stay in the fridge. Right. To solidify or to get hotter so that then you can cut it into pieces. You can right. score the pan and cut small pieces. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. We're gonna cut this just like fudge after. So that when I eat the whole pan, 
I don't feel guilty by taking big pieces. I just eat little pieces and then I don't think I'm eating that much. I've never known you to feel guilty. Yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing a different side of me. So we're gonna, just now you slide that into your fridge until it's set up, until it's firm. A mm -hmm. Couple of hours, if you're in a hurry, pop it in your freezer for a little while. Okay. And that's... So you can do it in the morning and use it for dessert at night. Oh, absolutely. And you can have it ready in a couple of hours if you'd like to, really. Just oh let it set God. up. Spread it thinner if you, if you want to and make like a bark out of it instead so of like thick pieces. That's the beginning and this is the finished product. This right is the here. finished product. It's already it's set up. Like. And again, you'll see why the plastic was there. Now we just lift it right out. Very simple. We can unwrap. Now see, I could put that between two graham crackers, <laughs> right? And I could eat that like a sandwich, am I right? Absolutely, that's actually another version I've actually done with uh, pieces of broken graham cracker and marshmallows in it, and you like have yourself- a reverse s'mores. It's a reverse s'mores, really, is what it is. Wow. So then you can cut any size pieces you'd like. And this is great too, around this time of the year, you're coming up to Halloween in another month or so. Um, you know, this is really something that would be great and you can give it to the kids. I think sometimes they appreciate something that's more homemade. You take it, wrap it into small parcels or small portions, and then right. you can give it to people. The thing with this is you do want to keep it refrigerated. Yeah. Uh, you don't, it's not something you want to set out in the summer because you'll just have pudding, basically. Right, right old um, on, on this version here, I did sprinkle a little bit more pretzel and potato chip on top before you put it in the right. refrigerator. Right, and I also, this is another option depending how much salt you want in the flavor. Uh, you can sprinkle a little bit of extra sea salt or kosher salt across the top just before you mm -hmm. set it up. So we're gonna cut some nice, just like fudge. I get to taste something else. <laughs> wow, look at that, huh? Looks so good. And it's great too, I mean, football season, you can watch the games, oh, you're having holiday parties. That's really nice, you can put something like that out on the table around the holidays. And then you can get a little colorful, you can put peppermint sticks in there. Absolutely, see you got the pretzel yeah. and everything running in what here, nice this look. is very nice. I don't think I'd put turkey in there for Thanksgiving, but I'm sure there's something, maybe cranberries. Oh, absolutely, nice absolutely. Cranberries. Orange zest, Orange Grand Marnier, zest. Irish whiskey, oh. more adult versions. Um, I, I have a saying I've used in kitchen for years, really simple, Sam, is just there are no mistakes in kitchens, only a creation of new dishes. Okay. Go with that and have a good I time. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. So, Believe me, I've good. had to rely on that. Yeah. <laughs> we all need an excuse. That's we right. Oh, it was that's supposed to be mistake. that way. It was yeah. supposed to be. I intended that. Now that sets up nicely and you can garnish your plate if you needed to, depending on what you're serving, maybe with nuts or with whatever I mean God you can do whatever you yeah want. these are great like I said on their own with a nice cocktail with a nice dark beer mmm mmm this is so good oh it's beautiful what a nice blend sweet and salty sweet salty oh, I like the bacon in there but again you can leave it out if you'd like we're gonna have to put that on my desk absolutely that's gotta go upstairs for sure I'm telling you this is delicious <laughs> And like Chuck. I said, have fun with the, with the kids oh, too. Yeah. You know? And you can get the kids involved at the family event. Chuck, thank you so much. No, absolutely. This Enjoy.